It seems the mainstream media is trying to get weak Christians around the world to follow the lead of a lukewarm Christian so as to help Rome enforce their mark in the very near future. Check this out. North Korea prison camp survivor. Am I a Christian? Yes. I love Jesus, but I deny it. The article says North Korea took her name, stripped her clothes, and shaved her hair, but there was one thing they couldn't take from Prisoner 42, her faith in Jesus. Am I a Christian? Yes, I love Jesus, but I deny it. In an interview with Open Doors, 42 recounted how each morning when they would call for her, she would crawl out of a door flap, typically used for dogs or cats, and keep her head bowed low because she was not allowed to make eye contact with the guards. Then, for an hour, they would ask her the same questions. Why were you in China? Who did you meet? Did you go to church? Did you have a Bible? Did you meet any South Koreans? Are you a Christian? She said she had to lie to stay alive. Am I a Christian? Yes, I love Jesus, but deny it. If I admit that I was helped by Chinese Christians, I will be killed either quickly or slowly, she said. This woman claims she is a strong Christian, but in the same breath, she denies Jesus to prevent being killed for her faith in the exact same way lukewarm Christians will do when the guillotines are rolled out. Do not fall for her misunderstanding of how faith works, brothers and sisters. Pray for her that she repents before the mark is enforced in her nation. Basic biblical reality is, if you deny Jesus Christ when standing before the guillotine, you will forever seal your fate and receive the mark of the beast, which will then cause you to die in hellfire. For Jesus clearly said in Matthew 16, 25, that whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. In other words, when the powers that be demand you keep Sunday holy so as to worship the Pope, when you know the true Sabbath is how you show worship to the Creator, if you bow to the Pope to save your mortal life, you will not receive eternal life. But if you let them kill your mortal body, the Lord will bless you with an eternal body that can never die. For Jesus also said in Matthew 10, 28, that we should fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And he also said through his servant Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54, So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. The corruptible here is your mortal body, and the incorruptible is the eternal body Christ gives to his obedient children. Now, not only is this poor soul that feared to die for Jesus, making all of the hundreds of millions of Christians that died for their faith during the Vatican Inquisitions look as if they didn't have to die, and so we don't either today. She is also being used by Satan to make weak Christians of today believe it's okay to deny Jesus when they are soon threatened with death. And the only reason this is happening now is because they need to cultivate as much doubt as possible in the hearts of billions because the long prophesied mark of the beast is soon to be enforced, and they don't want to have to deal with people refusing to bow to the Pope in Rome. Satan wants everyone in the world to bow to him so as to declare Jesus weak. He hates them that much. But when they bow, this will only cause them all to die with him in hellfire. You know, as much as he hates Christians and loves to kill them, he would rather prefer the Christian deny Christ because that's where he has victory. But one can't help see that with every Christian that dies for their faith, the dying God of this world, who is Satan, loses one more soul in his camp that he needs to be there when he surrounds the city of heaven a thousand years from now. He knows his time is short, and so he is gathering his troops for that prophetic day right now. And so how do you rid yourself of this fear that is obviously being cultivated all over the world? Obedient Christians know and understand what Paul meant when he stated in 2 Timothy 1.7 that our God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. When you accept Jesus Christ as Savior, I mean really as Savior, not this lip service Savior you see all over the world, you will finally understand what perfect peace really means. And so if you're having issues with fear in any aspect of life, 
I implore you to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and then all the fear will be completely removed from your heart in a way that will truly amaze you. You will then understand how people could literally sing hymns unto Christ while standing in fire, as Huss did when the Pope burned him alive on the stake. And for more truth regarding how fear will guarantee your place in hellfire, see this video when you get time. Thank you for watching. God bless.